the mighty Mississippi River, a lifeline for millions, suddenly drops to dangerously low levels one month, then floods entire communities the next. It's not a scene from a disaster film. It's the grim reality we're facing right now. Here's the shocking part. Experts are saying the situation might be beyond saving, as human intervention has left the river more unstable than ever. But what exactly led to this crisis? And why could it be too late to turn things around? Let's dig into the details. The Mississippi River's Legacy and Importance The Mississippi River has been a lifeline for the United States since the early days of its expansion. Its significance can be traced back to the Louisiana Purchase in 1803, when the U.S. bought a massive portion of land from France, doubling the size of the country. This deal included the entire Mississippi River Basin, which quickly became vital to the nation's growth. With its vast network of tributaries and access to the Gulf of Mexico, the Mississippi played a central role in trade, agriculture, and transportation, helping turn the U.S. into a continental power. Early settlers and businesses quickly realized the importance of the river, and cities like New Orleans became bustling hubs of commerce. The river's reach is mind-boggling. It stretches across more than 2,300 miles, making it the world's third longest river system. The Mississippi's basin spans over a million square miles, touching 31 states and even parts of Canada. This river system is also a lifeline for millions of Americans, providing drinking water to over 20 million people. It supports more than a million square miles of fertile farmland, making it essential for the agricultural industry from the rolling cornfields of Iowa to the soybean farms of Missouri, the Mississippi has nourished some of the most productive farmland in the world, which continues to supply a massive chunk of the United States agricultural exports. The Mississippi River Basin produces 92% of the nation's agricultural exports. Impressive, right? Engineering marvel or environmental catastrophe? For over a century, Humans have been trying to control the Mississippi River, taming its unpredictable flow with an intricate system of levees, dams, and floodways. The idea was simple. Manage the river's water levels to make navigation easier, protect towns from flooding, and boost commerce. And in many ways, it worked. The levees built along the riverbanks have allowed for steady barge traffic, making it one of the most efficient transportation networks in the world. Cities along the Mississippi flourished, and goods moved swiftly across the country, helping turn the U.S. into an economic powerhouse. But the flip side of this engineering feat is the unintended consequences. By boxing in the river with levees, we've disrupted its natural behavior. The Mississippi River used to spread out across vast floodplains during heavy rains, which allowed sediment to settle and enrich the surrounding land. Now. These floodplains are largely cut off. The river is no longer able to follow its natural course, and the system we've built to control it is starting to show cracks. Extreme weather events, like droughts and floods, are pushing the limits of what the levees and dams can handle. What was once a dynamic, self-regulating system has become an over-engineered canal, and it's struggling to cope with modern challenges. The environmental toll. One of the biggest challenges facing the Mississippi today is pollution, and it's a problem that starts on the land surrounding it. Farmers in the Mississippi River Basin rely heavily on chemical fertilizers containing nitrogen and phosphorus to boost their crop yields. While these chemicals are great for growing corn and soybeans, they often end up washing into the river. Once in the water, they cause serious problems. The excess nutrients create massive algae blooms in the Gulf of Mexico, leading to what's known as a dead zone. This is an area of water so low in oxygen that it can't support life. Fish, shrimp, and other marine creatures either flee the area or die off. Every summer, the Gulf's dead zone grows to about the size of Connecticut, and it's costing the U.S. seafood and tourism industries millions of dollars annually. If you're liking this video so far, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. The pollution doesn't just affect the Gulf, it also makes the river itself less hospitable. With so much agricultural runoff 
entering the water, large sections of the Mississippi are no longer safe for recreational activities like swimming or fishing. What was once a thriving river, teeming with life, has become increasingly barren. The dead zones aren't just in the Gulf, they're creeping into the river as well, contributing to its overall decline. Flooding and drought, a delicate balance. The Mississippi River has always been temperamental, but lately it feels like it's on an entirely different level. One month, the river's water is swelling, bursting its banks and flooding towns. And the next month, it's so low that shipping companies have to lighten their loads to avoid scraping the bottom. These bizarre fluctuations in water levels have made life along the river increasingly unpredictable. The river's natural ebb and flow have been heavily influenced by human intervention, but now climate change and extreme weather patterns are making it even more erratic. Historically, the Mississippi River has always been prone to flooding. In the 19th and early 20th centuries, floods were almost expected and communities adapted as best they could. However, events like the catastrophic 1927 flood showed just how vulnerable the region was. As weather patterns shifted, floods became more destructive, and the construction of levees and dams, though helpful, couldn't completely contain the river. Meanwhile, climate variability, droughts followed by heavy rain, and warmer temperatures leading to rapid snowmelt has compounded the issue. The river's behavior has become less predictable, leaving those who depend on it unsure of what's coming next. Salt water, intrusion, and its consequences. On top of these water level fluctuations, there's another crisis creeping up the Mississippi River, salt water intrusion. For decades, humans have been deepening the river to accommodate larger ships and boost commerce. While that's been great for business, it's also opened the door to a significant problem. Salt water from the Gulf of Mexico is moving upstream. The deeper the river gets, the more easily the salt water flows in, especially when the river's flow is low. And when this salt water intrusion happens, it wreaks havoc on the freshwater systems. The consequences of salt water infiltration are widespread and alarming. Salt water isn't just a problem for the environment. It poses a direct threat to agriculture and drinking water. Farmland along the river depends on freshwater for irrigation. And when that water turns salty, crops suffer. This affects everything from the food supply to the livelihoods of farmers who rely on the river. Beyond agriculture, salt water damages industrial infrastructure and can corrode pipes and distribution systems, making it harder to provide safe drinking water to the communities along the river. The future of the Mississippi, too late to reverse. Triple dip La Nina, that does not lend itself to rain in this region. You mostly need it in the Missouri River Valley and the northern Mississippi, and it's not looking like it would happen that quickly. So this could be a problem, Diane, all the way through winter. And Ginger, the low river levels making it hard for the barges to get downriver. I mean, that's a big enough impact in and of itself, but it goes wider than that. Can you walk us through this domino effect? Given all these challenges, there are efforts to restore parts of the river's natural floodplains and ecosystems some communities are trying to give the river back some of the space it needs to spread out during floods, hoping this will relieve some of the pressure. However, many experts warn that it might be too late to undo the damage. The Mississippi River has been so heavily engineered and altered that returning it to a more natural state seems almost impossible. The ecosystems that once thrived along its banks have been drained and replaced by farmland and development. Restoring what was lost would require a massive overhaul, something that may not be realistic given the current reliance on the river for agriculture, industry, and transportation. Looking ahead, the future of the Mississippi looks shaky. Climate change is expected to bring even more extreme weather. With hotter summers, more intense droughts, and heavier rainfall, these patterns will only increase the strain on the river. Floods will likely become more frequent and droughts more severe, leaving communities along the river in a constant state of uncertainty. The Mississippi wants to behave like a natural river, flooding during heavy rain and drying during drought, but the infrastructure built to control it is struggling to keep up 
and as climate change accelerates, the river's inherent nature will clash more and more with human attempts to tame it. Let us know your thoughts about this video in the comments. And remember to like and subscribe for more intriguing discoveries like this. See you in the next video.